So initially this whole video was going to be about a lot that I made to mimic the look of Kodak Ektar with my Fuji F-Log footage. However, as I was designing the LUT, I realised that the process I had come up with was actually good for making LUTs in general and not just for mimicking a film stock. So I figured it would be useful for me to share that process and go through it step by step. See, a lot of videos that show you how to make LUTs really only teach you how to export a colour grade from Premiere, Resolve or Lightroom. They don't actually tell you what you have to do in order to get good footage and to design a good LUT based on that footage. This isn't a colour grading tutorial per se, however I personally do like to design LUTs to monitor the footage on my Atomos Shogun and then when I go to grade the footage I'll use that LUT as a starting point. See, with LUTs the journey is as important as the destination, especially with monitoring LUTs. You just don't want anything on the LUT that would influence your decision as a filmmaker to change something when the underlying footage isn't being recorded like that. And this means it's really important to have high quality footage to base the lot off. So how do we get this? Well, first you're going to need a colour chart. I managed to get a cheap one off Amazon. And you're going to want a colour chart that has a good range of colours and a grey scale along the bottom. Then you want to light this as evenly as possible and expose for 18% grey. I personally just used a light meter to make sure that my exposure was 100% accurate. Then, once you have that footage, you simply want to import that into Resolve, Premiere, or Lightroom, and then you want to just double check that you got your exposure 100% accurate. You want to use the waveform to make sure that the 18% grey is on around 50 IRE for Fuji F-Log footage. And then what you want to do is simply take the grade that you want to turn into a LUT and apply it to this footage, because we know this footage is perfectly exposed, and we know that it has a good range of colours. This will allow us to see what is happening to the contrast, the exposure, and the hue and saturation of each colour. Now this is where a lot of personal choice comes into it, and it's not an exact science. However, you want to really pay attention to what happens to 18% grey. If 18% grey is pulled up too much or pushed down too much, you might end up under or overexposing your footage. Yes, you can make darker LUTs. I personally like darker LUTs because I like to look at a darker LUT on the monitor. I think it makes the footage look better. But you want to know exactly what is happening so that when you are looking at the monitor and you're looking at the footage with that LUT, you're making an informed decision based on what you know. You also want to double check the uh, distance between the highlights and the shadows because that will tell you how much contrast you've added to the footage. Finally, you want to check that there are no weird uh, artifacts or hues that are completely off. For example, you might want to render purple as a slight pink, but you probably don't want to render it as a deep dark green. So you just want to check that each color looks roughly in the ballpark of where you want it to end up. Again, it's an art, not a science. So we're trying to make sure that we know what is going on but we don't need to dictate exactly how each colour is supposed to look. Finally, I would recommend that you actually go out and you take some test footage that's perfectly exposed of a range of environments with a bunch of different colours and just check that there's no problem areas. Because even though we used a colour chart to try and give us as many colours as possible, it's still not as comprehensive as the real world. And you might identify some problem areas that don't show up on the colour chart. I find personally that LUTs are kind of a project in and of themselves. They're never really finished and you can always tinker with them and you always find that there are issues that need to be resolved and um, modifications that you can make. And I definitely have found that the LUTs I have made have represented an evolution in my style over time. Personally, I like to use Resolve to color grade because it's really easy to export LUTs from Resolve. You don't need any plugins or extra software. You can just export directly from Resolve. But more importantly, you can apply any adjustments you make to separate nodes. I like to create separate nodes for my contrast and my exposure, as well as my hue and my saturation. And what this allows me to do is export different versions of the LUT 
that can be used on different cameras. So for example, my Fuji camera has much more dynamic range than my Mavic Air. So I might export a lot with more contrast for my Fuji F-Log footage and a lot with less contrast and less saturation for my Mavic Air footage. So anyway, that's all there really is to this process. It's really not that complicated. This was just a really quick video that I edited together because I haven't made one in ages. I've been really busy at university this year and I planned this video ages ago, but I haven't had the time to finish it. So anyway, uh, that's all for me and I hope this video was useful and I will see you later.